Today we're going to show you how to build embedding search into any application using BuildShip or Firestore databases. So we can do things like have a natural language query of our symptoms, persistent stomach pain with diarrhea and constipation, and we can search through a database of doctors to return the right doctor with the specialties relevant for the condition. We'll also show you how to filter by numeric fields, such as having a latitude and longitude distance. Let's get into it. We're going to build a natural language search using BuildShip databases. So let's search semantic. And we have this option to do semantic search natural language queries with either a BuildShip database or a Firestore database. Um, with the BuildShip database, it's all built into the application. You don't have to do anything. If you have your own Firestore database you're already working with, feel free to use this template here. We'll use BuildShip today. So after we clone the folder, we have the semantic search BuildShip database, and inside we have add data row with embedding. And this is if you already have structured data that you want to enter into the database and then create an embedding for. Um, and I'll go through what an embedding is later. To add an unstructured data row, you can add any sort of unstructured paragraph uh, entry that you want and then provide a data schema. So the data schema would be a JSON structure with the field name, a type description, and some examples. And what this workflow is going to do, it's going to extract structured data from the unstructured data that you provide, and then use that to populate your, your database and create an embedding of your selected field. So we'll walk through this workflow one step at a time. And today we are going to build a matching system to match patients to the appropriate doctor for their symptoms. So let's walk through from top to bottom. For the inputs, we have the unstructured data field, which is a string. We have the data schema that we'll provide. The collection name is the name of the database table that we want to write to. And then the embedding field is which of these fields in the data schema we want to use for the embedding. This example really helped me understand embeddings. Embeddings are a way to represent words as a set of numbers so that you can perform mathematical operations on words. So you can do things like take the word king, subtract man, add woman, and you'll end up with queen. This is a simple example on two-dimensional space, just an x and y axis, but the embeddings we work with are typically 512 or many, many more dimensions. And so you can get some pretty complex relationships mapped out. So if we do an embedding search on this set of four words for the word royal, we should get back king and queen as they're going to be the closest mathematically to the representation of royal. Now back in BuildShip, the first thing we do is we extract the data. So for the instructions, we are saying that we're extracting the structured data from the unstructured input and we give it this data schema. And as the input, we give it the unstructured data. We'll use the best in class model of today and we'll give it a max tokens of 800 and a temperature of 0 0.1. A lower temperature just means that we have a more predictable answer, so there's less likelihood that it's going to hallucinate or make something up. The next step is to generate the embedding. So the content that we're going to generate an embedding for is if there's an embedding field, we will use the uh, embedding field from the extracted data. If we don't select an embedding field, we're just going to take the entire piece of unstructured data and embed all of that. And when you're working in high dimensional space, you can do things like embed an entire paragraph and actually get some pretty useful results. And we're going to use this model from OpenAI. Just make sure that you're using the same model to embed the data and the search query. That will return a very large vector. And then we will create that vector embedding as an entry into our database and then create the document um, using the collection name and for the data, we will give it the extract data uh, as well as the raw data field as the just unstructured data. And that's it. So why don't we go ahead and test this out? So I've had Claude generate an example embedding search where we're going to match doctors based on the patient's symptoms that they enter. So this is what we're going to extract for all the doctors, their name, any certifications, specialties, a description, which city they're located in, and then a location as well. Let's copy that and we'll put it in build chip as the data schema. Then we'll come back and get the unstructured input for Dr. One and put that here in the unstructured data. And let's call this doctor's list. 
for the embedding field, we want to pick which field we think would, would best match the doctor to symptoms. So let's go ahead and pick the specialties field and see how that does. If you want to embed multiple fields, you can. You just, you'll just have to add more generate embedding nodes. So we'll type specialties in here, and let's go ahead and test the flow. So let's see what happened each step of the way. So we got the doctor name, certifications, and specialties as well as the description of the doctor and the city and location. It looks like it didn't do the latitude and longitude for us. So let's actually add that. We can add a node and do the perplexity AI node. And for this one, let's say, I'll put the latitude and longitude of the city in which the doctor is currently working. And for the prompt, we will just give it the unstructured data. Then for the extract data field, Instead of just giving it the unstructured data, we'll also give, and we'll just put in the output of the perplexity AI chat. And this should be enough. So this is showing up as JavaScript. I'm just gonna copy this, cut it, and change it to text and paste it back in. So now the unstructured data and the latitude longitude are going to show up here. We'll go back and test the entire flow. So now the perplexity node is giving us the latitude and longitude of the city that Dr. Sarah Chen is currently practicing in, in Boston, Massachusetts. When we pass that into the extract data, it's able to use that to populate the latitude and longitude of the location. So now we have the location of the doctor, and all of this is being entered into the database. First, the embeddings are generated, and this is a long, long list of numbers. That embedding is then added as an entry into the database and then we add all of the fields that we generated as well into the database. And as output, we just enter the output of the last node output for confirmation. If we wanted to get a custom output, for example, the output of extract data, the entire object, then the next time we run this for the next doctor, when we try and run this, it says that extract data is not a string because I changed the type of the output. We can come in here to configure and change this to an object and save. When I test the flow, we get the JSON generated output for Dr. Marcus Johnson. It looks like Perplexity didn't want to give the accuracy. Of it's concerned about Dr. Marcus Johnson's credentials. Um, let's just be a little bit more specific. Let's change this to be, let's see if that makes things a little bit better. So now it's output the latitude and longitude for San Francisco. Let's keep going and get a few more doctors in here. So I'm doing these one at a time. You could always build the workflow so that if you have many entries that you want to enter all at once or enter it in a batch, uh, you can adjust the workflow to do that. Okay, now we have all of our doctors in the database. Let's click on database here. And I have a lot of tables because we're using this for a lot of other things, but let's go and set up the existing Firestore collections that were created for us, the doctor's list table. We don't have to go and set this up. This is only if you want to go in and view and edit the individual fields and entries. So we'll select all the columns, continue, and it's going to automatically select a field type. Usually this is pretty good. So we have the certification city description we have a few um, duplicates here, so we'll just click Finish. Once I see the duplicates without a location, I'm just going to click those and delete them. What I'd recommend you do is you have a test database that you work with, and then when you have your final database, you just come into BuildShip and change the collection name. So from Doctor's List Test to Doctor's List. But we'll work with the table that we have now. So now that we have our database populated, and can continue adding to it as needed in our application. Let's go into Semantic Search BuildShip DB. So let's just go ahead and test this and I'll walk you through the flow. The collection name is going to be Doctors List. And let's give the top two results just to make sure we're on the right track. And we can query for something like severe headaches behind one eye with sensitivity to light. Let's test the flow. And we're expecting a failure the first time because in a Firestore database, you have to manually index any sort of embedding field. 
So instead of you having to go and set that up in your own database, we've created a button. You just have to click the play button for the vector query here and say create index. Now this can take some time. So while you're doing that, we will test out the other side of the workflow. So in this workflow, we take in a query, a collection name, and then the number of results we want to get back. We then check to see if the query exists. And if it does, we'll go to the left here and generate embedding for the query and then do a vector query on the database. If you leave the vector field blank here, it's just going to query all of the different vector fields in the database, anything with underscore embedding in the name, uh, which is how we formatted it in the previous workflow. If the query is blank, we'll test that out now. Then we go to the else branch where we just get all of the entries in the database. Um, so this is a way that if you want to display all of the entries in the database and then only filter them if there's a query, you're able to do that in your application very easily. So now that we've made ourselves a cup of tea, let's test the flow and see if our index has been built. All right, so let's see if it worked. With our generate embedding here, we've created out of our query, the severe headaches behind one eye, this very long list of numbers. We then go through the database and find using the cosine distance measure, any sort of result that is within that distance threshold. So we've gotten two results back and let's see if these are closest to what we're looking for. So yes, migraine treatment, cluster headaches, tension headaches for the first doctor. And then because we asked for two doctors, it's giving us Dr. James Wilson as well, but his specialties don't really seem to be what we're looking for. So let's try another query and see if we get the right doctor again. This time we're looking for persistent stomach pain after eating. And the first result here is Dr. Marcus Johnson for inflammatory bowel diseases, which seems about right. And the second one is neurology headache medicine. So I think the ones, the doctors that we generated are all pretty diverse and we can take the top result here. But you can imagine if we had more doctors that are around bowel diseases, then those should show up. So that's how you can build embedding searches into any of your build chip databases. You can, like we did, add unstructured data, extract structured data, create an embedding and add that to a database. You can even do things like use perplexity to get ad additional information. Um, or if you already have the data, you can just provide the JSON of that data. And then we can use the semantic search build chip database to use a natural language query to search through that database and return the relevant entries. To integrate this into your app, you only need a few steps. We need to connect our REST API call triggers. I'm not going to go too in depth into this, but just click connect. All of your inputs should be properly structured in the body here. And then you click ship and BuildShip will automatically create an API URL that you can use in your application. And once it's shipped, you should also have an example of an endpoint which gives you how you can call that endpoint. I like to take this and feed it into an AI. We're working on also providing an AI handoff where it'll tell the AI all the inputs and output structure to receive, as well as some examples based on um, what you did when you built it. So you can go ahead and copy this and put it into your app. Same thing with the semantic search with BuildShip. Just click connect. You have your inputs automatically created here and ship it and that API URL should be ready for you to use. So now that we have the base functionality down, let's add some bonus points. So now with our query, I want to add a latitude and longitude field. And I want to be able to filter my results to only show doctors that are within a certain radius of the latitude and longitude. So let's give a radius and miles. And the way to update our workflow, we're going to come down to our vector query field. So to get this working, let's take the output that we have here, and we want to give an example to the AI of what our location looks like here. Um, so we'll copy this and come into the modify using AI. 
clicking the magic wand. We'll paste this into the additional context and say, So we're going to modify to only show results within the radius of miles based on a provided lat and longitude in the inputs. And then we give below the structure of the data we should receive, which is just a paste of the output, just so that it knows where to find the latitude and longitude in the output. So let's generate. So now it's given us a latitude, longitude, and radius in miles inputs. So for this, we will select the latitude input, here the longitude input, and here the radius in miles. So now let's test this by putting the latitude and longitude, and let's say within 10 miles, and we'll test this flow now. So we got Dr. Marcus Johnson in the results, but let's say we change this latitude to be 100 instead of 37. And now we should not get this result. So nothing was in there. So no doctors are within that radius, and so nothing is returned. So that's how you can add a location filter to the results. Uh, one note on this is that we added the location filter after we got the vector query. You can spend a little bit more time on this to add the latitude and longitude filter before you do the vector query instead of filtering based on the outputs, um, but I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Thank you very much, and we're looking forward to seeing what you build.